Hi everybody, my name is Jonathan Kiyu. Welcome to the Music Corner. For the next 30 minutes, we're going to give you some tips on how to become a better guitar player and uh, help you grow your repertoire of songs and have more that you can share with friends and family and your fans who want to listen to you play the guitar. Now today's episode, I'm calling it the DCG trick because there is a trick involved here that I hope you take away with you and use not only for playing other people's songs but for making up your own songs as well. There have been a million songs that have been written using this trick we're going to talk about today. There's no reason why you can't do the same. So let's get started. Today's episode, you could say, is going to focus on rhythm guitar, meaning we're going to be playing a lot of chords with a specific rhythmic pattern, as opposed to lead guitar, which would be playing a solo or improvising on one or two strings at the same at a time. So let's move on here. D, C, and G. Now, I'm hoping that you have at least a, a passing familiarity with D, C, and G chords. We're going to go through them right now real quick. If, you're, if you haven't mastered these chords yet, today's the day to begin doing it, especially the G chord, because when we get to G, you're going to see there's a special way I want you to play the G chord uh, for today. Okay, let's start with the D major chord. So the D chord, with our left hand here, the D chord involves three fingers, middle finger, second, uh, second fret, first string, ring finger, third fret, second string, and index finger, third string, second fret. Now if you look carefully, it looks like a, uh, like a triangle, right? Middle, ring, pointer. It makes a nice triangular kind of shape. Now what you don't do is also important. When you strum a D chord, you definitely do not strum the fat sixth string up here, okay? The other five are fair game. But the D chord does not sound good with that low, boomy E string tw twang in there. Now, if you already know your D chord, let's move over to the next chord in this sequence today, the C chord. C major, index finger, second string, first fret, middle finger, fourth string, second fret, ring finger, fifth string, third fret. Now, here's where things get interesting. The G chord coming up in a second here can be played in more than one way. In fact, we're going to use a couple different ways in today's program. But what I want you to do with your C chord now as we move over to the G chord is to do G a very specific way. So let's take a look at the left hand. We're on the C chord here. Your middle and ring fingers, middle and ring right here, move up one string, okay? They're in the same relationship they were a minute ago on the C chord, but now they're on the two fattest strings. Middle finger, fifth string, second fret, ring finger, sixth string, third fret, Index finger off the guitar, pinky, skinny string three. Okay, now let's stay focused on the left hand here. And notice how smooth this is to go from C to G like this. Now hopefully I make it look easy. I've been doing this for a lot of years. But anytime there's a C chord that goes into a G chord in sequence like that, it makes sense to do G with those three fingers. Your index finger is just free waiting its turn to be involved, okay? Pinky, middle, and ring. Now, a lot of you out there probably already know your D, C, and G chords. So let's talk about what you can do with D, C, and G. Well, there's a lot of famous songs that have that specific chord sequence in that order, D to C to G. That might ring a bell. To me, that sounds like Van Morrison sing Gloria right there. Okay, and that's one of about a million songs that are written not just with those three chords, but specifically in that order. Just then I was doing two strums on G, uh, two strums on D, one strum on C, and one on G. So D D C G. D, D, C, G, C, G. And if you can't quite switch chords that fast, that, let this be your motivation, your inspiration for getting faster at those chords. Changing between chords is a real challenge for beginning guitar players. And uh, repetition helps. And having a song that you know and like, that can help a lot too, give you a motivation to practice your D, C, and G. So D twice, C once, 
and G words. And if you know that song pretty well, you know there's a part in the middle that has a little fancier rhythm, but it still uses those chords. still D's and C's and G's. So lots of other tunes have that, uh, that chord progression. I'm going to sh illustrate a few more in a second, but stay tuned. If you're doing a good job in your D, C, and G, and, and this seems kind of easy, in a minute I'm going to show you a fancy way of doing it that also shows up in a lot of songs. Meanwhile, back at regular D, regular C, regular G, uh, how about... Uh, Bell 2, Werewolves of London, I'm throwing in a little something extra with my pinky. Okay, but that gets us in the ballpark of Werewolves of London, right? The, what I was adding, by the way, was I had my D chord with my left hand, I was adding on my pinky, third string, fourth fret. One note makes a nice difference, especially if you focus in with your pick and make sure the listener can hear that one string specifically. Make sure they can hear it a little bit louder than they might otherwise hear it. Okay, Werewolf, Werewolves of London. Now, another classic might be uh, Sweet Home Alabama. D, C, and G as well. owns these chords, right, D, C, and G, but a lot of people have found ways to write classic songs using D, C, and G, and there's no reason why you can't do the same. Now where things get interesting is when uh, guitarists, rhythm guitarists, songwriters, start adding in extra sounds in there, like we did a minute ago with that Werewolves of London, you know, that kind of riff. Just adding on one extra finger or doing one extra thing can give the, your D, C, and G some personality. Okay. Now, a minute ago, I mentioned that uh, there's ways of sort of spicing up this D, C, and G relationship. So let's get to that right now. This is something that does apply to specific songs, but you can also use it for any song that uses D, C, and G as, a, as the heart of its, of its chord progression. I'm going to play for a minute. Let's focus in on the left hand, and then I'll talk about what I'm doing. Here comes uh, D, C, and G done a, a slightly new way. a little twist, getting some more colorful sounds in there. The only thing that stays the exact same as early in the program is D. The D is the same as the D that we were playing five minutes ago, okay? But the C and the G, I'm going to show you some twists on this. So that's why I'm calling this the DCG trick. That's our, our, our program for today, the DCG trick, because what we're about to do gets a great sound that's great for writing songs and uh, learning our classic songs that have already been written that use this trick. So here we go. The principle at work here, and this is important, so pay attention here, everybody. Ring finger on your left hand. The ring finger is going to stay on the second string, third fret for the whole time. Okay, see where my ring finger is right there? Whether I'm doing the D or this new modified C or this new G, that ring finger is never going never gonna to move. Now, it can slide a little bit but it's never going to lift off the guitar. As soon as you lift it off the guitar, it's going to slow you down and get in the way of your nice smooth rhythm. So the D is the same as before, 2-3-2, two, two, meaning 2nd fret, 3rd fret, 2nd fret. Give a nice strum, just avoid the, uh, the fat string there. It just sounds a little, uh, little boomy and not so harmonious. Now, here comes the new C, ready? Ring finger stays where it's glued down there. Index in middle, hopping over. Where do they go? Index. 4th string, 2nd fret, middle finger, 5th string, 3rd fret. So now we have kind of a weird version of a C chord. 
the C add nine chord. I'm avoiding the, the fat string on this uh, version of C. It just doesn't sound so great. The other five are fair game. Ready to review here? D, the traditional D major chord. Ring finger stays. Index moves over one and ring f uh, middle finger reaches way over there. So now we have ring finger where it just was, second string, third fret. Index finger, fourth string, second fret. Middle finger, fifth string, third fret. Okay? And remember, we count strings one to six starting on the littlest string. So one, two, three, four, five, six is the fast string. So here's our C add nine chord. Listen to how it sounds coming out of the D. Here's D. And here's C. Or I should call it the C add nine chord. D and C add nine. Okay, ready for the final step? This is the easiest one. Index in middle, up one more string. Index, fifth string, second fret. Middle finger, sixth string, third fret. Ring finger, where it's always been right there. Now, pinky, snug it in right there. Skinny string, first fret. Okay, so ring and pinky look like that. Pinky on the skinny string, ring on the second skinny string. Index. 5th string, 2nd fret, middle, 6th string, 3rd fret. There's my G chord. Now, this particular version of G doesn't have another name. It's not called G something. Uh, now, I think of it as the chord the Beatles used for Hard Day's Night. So for me, this is the Hard Day's Night G. In fact, the, the Beatles, we can talk about that tune in a minute, about how the Beatles went from uh, uh, G to C, add 9. But we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so let's do a quick review. A lot of songs go in the order D, C, G, meaning the chord progression is that order D, C, and G, regardless of how they're strummed. Um, now, you know, what, whether the right hand is strumming down or up or fast or slow, the left hand is playing D to C to G. It's a great sound, it's a classic sound. Now, what we're talking about is how over the years, songwriters and rhythm guitar players have taken that D, C, G sound and sort of embellished on it using a D chord, a C add nine, and a, a fancy G, like I said, I call it the Hard Day's Night G. A lot of bluegrass guitar players uh, play this version of G because they like the chiming sound you get from the, those two skinny strings being pressed down the third fret. Okay, so Sweet Home Alabama, for example. slower than the real song goes, just to illustrate how it's a, a D chord for two counts, and a C chord, or C add nine for two counts, and a G for four, to D twice, C add nine twice, and G. And notice my ring finger stayed there the whole time, right? My ring finger wasn't moving anywhere. And that kind of stability makes it a lot easier. So it, for a lot of you, it's going to take a little mind over matter to keep that ring finger pressing down there while you're doing some you know, relatively complicated tasks. Hang in there. It's going to save you trouble in the long run to keep that ring finger glued down. As soon as that ring finger lifts off, you're wasting those little microseconds you know, that make you sound less than professional on the guitar. A lot of people, when they change chords, it takes them one extra split second to get from one chord to another chord. Uh, at least when they're first starting out. And it's frustrating because obviously songs have a beat, songs happen in real time, and those little microseconds, I call them, are what separates a, a beginner from a more experienced player. So anytime you can get away with something, anytime you can do some sort of trick that saves you that, that split second, it's worth doing. Okay, so D, C add nine, G. I should give you another example. Our Marshall Tucker Band, Can't You See? That official sequence goes D, C add 9, G back to D again. So there's a D at either end of the sequence. D, C add 9, G back to D again. And it's that C add 9 that really adds such a cool 
variation to the DCG standard chord progression. That's really where we're getting a little kind of a soulful kind of uh, sound that a regular C major just doesn't give us. And then that the G with all four fingers, that has a, a pretty kind of a country sound by itself there too. So to do a quick recap, we have a standard D, C, and G. Classic chord progression, classic sound. A lot of songs have been written using those three chords in that specific order. Then we're showing you a little twist on it, which uh, in my memory is a twist that you can find in songs like Sweet Home Alabama and uh, Can't You See by the Marshall Tucker Band. Same D, this C add nine, and then this bigger version of, of G. Okay. Now I mentioned uh, Hard Day's Night a minute ago. To my knowledge, the Beatles start off that song with that G chord once the, you know, when the singing comes in. And they move over, watch this, they move over to basically that C add nine chord again, although they keep both those fingers down. It's been a hard day's night. Very subtle. I start on that four finger G, let's call it the four finger G. I just move my index and middle from the two fattest strings, strings uh, your A and E strings, just down to the D and A strings. And that, the name of that chord is still C add nine. It's been a hard day's night. Great trick, right? And I'm using that word today specifically, the idea of a, of a trick with your left hand. Um, if there's one thing that I can identify as I play the guitar <clears throat> for, for quite a few years now, <clears throat> I just I seem to know more tricks than I did when I first started. And if you think of it, your your skills as um, as tricks, as part of a tool bag that you can reach into and pull out when you need them, keeps you uh, with a light-hearted kind of approach to learning the guitar, rather than seeing everything as a major challenge um, or a hurdle. You know, think about learning a few tricks. You never know when you're going to need those tricks or those tools. Okay, so Hard Day's Night is related to what we're doing here today. Now let's go back to the original premise, which is D, C, and G, right? There are an awful lot of songs that take this one step further, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. The songs are still basically D to C to G, but they use a, sort of an extra trick here, and so many songs do this, great songs, classic songs, that's worth us uh, looking at today. It's worth spending the time and, and figuring this out. You ready? Okay. That ring any bells to anybody out there? Possibly, huh? Does it ring a bell? Well, if you can think of more than one song that uses that, then you are a, a true master of uh, musicology. A lot of songs have this specific riff. In fact, sometimes the songs are so similar, it's really only the melodies that are different, um, or the overall arrangement of the, the backing instruments. The idea here is that we're taking the D, and we're going to basically that C add nine, depending on exactly which song we're talking about, and then we're taking a little bit further to create this nice descending sound. So if, have you thought of the same th songs I'm thinking of? I'm talking about uh, Dear Prudence, by the Beatles, uh, A White Room by Cream and Eric Clapton, how about Needle in the Damage Done by, uh, by Neil Young. Now these songs are so similar from a, a rhythm guitar point of view uh, that it's worth us spending a little time talking about them. I'm going to play it again. Now what I did just there is reminiscent of all those songs that I just mentioned and probably a lot more. Maybe you're thinking of a few that I haven't thought of. But let's talk about what's going on here. D chord to start off. Now, depending on which exact song we're talking about, what happens next might vary slightly. But stick with me here. We got the D chord. What I did just then is I plucked my open D string, my fourth string. Right there, fourth string and then strum the rest of the chord. Now watch this. 
my middle finger, just my middle finger, is gonna reach over right here. That's the note C, by the way, in case you didn't know that, it's a note C. Fifth string, third fret. I'm gonna pluck that note specifically and strum the rest of the four skinny strings. So, so far we have D. Just move your middle finger. Okay, now watch this. My, my ring is gonna stay. My pointer finger is gonna find the fifth string, second fret. I'm gonna pluck that note. And my pointer finger, this is a, a tricky one, reach way back to the first fret. Now I'm gonna play through it slowly, and then I'll tell you from a uh, theoretical point of view what's happening here in terms of um, the music theory behind this. But I'm gonna play it slowly. Here comes the D. Reach over, grab the note C. Point a finger, grabs the note B. And that B turns into a B flat. I remember when I first became aware of this type of guitar playing, to me it sounded like two different guitar players, right? And it is sort of an illusion or a trick uh, because we hear a nice descending bass line, D to C to B to B flat, and yet we hear that nice chiming sound that seems to be floating there in the background, right, at the same time. So when it's done well, it does kind of give the illusion of, of two guitar players. It's certainly hard for a beginner guitar player to even imagine how one guitar player could make all that sound. I know I couldn't wrap my brain around it until I started learning this trick and, and tricks like this. So a minute ago I mentioned that we weren't going to just uh, learn how to play it, but I want to talk about what's going on. You heard me use a phrase a minute ago, that descending bass line. We heard the D note turn into a C note turn into a B note, turn into a B flat note. It's as if there's one instrument playing that. While another instrument is strumming those light chord tones, those other skinny strings in the background. So, I would call that a descending bass line. D to C to B to B flat. And if you look closely, you can even see, you can even see how my open fourth string, my open D string, and then see how that middle finger is on three on the A string, two on the A string, and one on the A string. It's a, it's a relatively sophisticated sound for, you know, pop music. For a rhythm guitar, it's beautiful and rewarding, and uh, it makes you sound terrific as a guitar player. Okay, so I mentioned tunes like Needle in the Damage Done and Dear Prudence by the Beatles, uh, Needle in the Damage Done by Neil Young, of course, uh, White Room by Eric Clapton and Cream. They all use this trick with probably slight variations from one tune to the next, um, but with a little time invested in learning this DCG trick, you're well on your way to mastering all three of those tunes. And like I said, probably more that I'm not even thinking of right now, but those are three classics that come to mind. And there's no reason why you can't write your own tunes using that riff as well. Apparently everyone else is doing it, so you can go ahead and do it too. So let's go through it one more time. The D chord, standard old D major, no surprises, middle, ring, and pinky. Oh, sorry, a middle ring and, and pointer, the index finger right there. There you go. The second chord in this sequence involves simply moving middle finger, third fret of the fifth string. See it right there? Now we could give this chord a couple of different names. For our purposes, let's call it a let's call it a variation on a C chord. Someone else might call it a D chord with C in the bass, meaning it's a D chord with C as the new low note. That's probably the best name, best name for it. But for our purposes, we're considering it as sort of a, a substitute for an old-fashioned C chord. A D chord, this variation on a C chord, index finger. Now, believe it or not, I'm gonna pause right there. This, this chord I'm playing, the B, B note, index finger, fifth string, second fret, and the ring finger planted where it's always been planted right there, 
That's actually a G chord. You know what it is? It's this big four finger G chord without the pinky and without the middle finger. And I'm focusing in my strum, and I hope you are too, on really the four inside strings. I'm not plucking the skinny one or the fat one. Uh, they just don't sound so good. So we have the D. Middle finger is a variation on a C chord. This uh, two finger version of the four finger G chord. And then reaching back, we would call that a G minor. Sometimes you can have more than one name for what's going on here. Nevertheless, what, this, what we're talking about now is uh, fitting our description of the DCG world and all the famous songs that have been written with those three chords in that order and the way uh, songwriters have taken those chords and found new things to do with them. If you think back musically, you know, a song like Gloria that Van Morrison sang, we're talking about something that's uh, maybe 1964. a great rock and roll riff. And as time goes on, rhythm guitar players figure out some other cool things you can do. Whether it's uh, John Lennon around the time of the White Album, which would have been the late 60s, I believe, doing this sound, or Eric Clapton and Cream doing it for a uh, for, uh, White Room, or maybe early 70s, whether it's um, uh, like Marshall Tucker Band on Can't You See? or Leonard Skinner with Sweet Home Alabama. Everyone seems to be doing this, and, and you can as well. Like that famous riff is built right into those three chords. Regular D, this C add nine, and G. A lot of music comes out of those three chords. I'm going to pause here for a minute and thank you for watching. Uh, you've been watching The Music Corner. My name is Jonathan Keyu. If you have any questions, comments, don't hesitate to send us an email or give us a phone call. I'd love to hear from you. Today's episode has been all about the D, C, and G trick. All the things you can do with D, C, and G that have been uh, done by great guitar players before and uh, maybe I've inspired you to think of some ways that you can take those three chords and do a lot with them as well. So thanks for watching. I'm going to play a little more on this D, C, and G and uh, look forward to doing more programs with you in the future. Thanks for watching.